to my channel. Today we are going to continue with chapter 11, nuclear and particle physics. So in this video, we are going to discuss on 11.2 radioactivity. So before we start to do the discussion, okay, let's go through first what are the equations that we will use for this subtopic. So the first one is the, the decay rate where dn over dt is equal to negative lambda n. Where negative here actually indicate that the particle or the nuclear is reducing. Okay. And the second equation that we will use here is the number of nucleic equals to the initial number of nucleic times E exponential negative lambda t of the activity A equals to A naught exponential negative lambda times t. Okay. And the third equation that we will use is the half-life where half-life t half is equal to ln 2 over lambda. Okay. So let's start with example 4 where a radioactive nucleic A disintegrate to a stable nucleic B. Okay, meaning that initially it's A, after that it is disintegrate. Eh? Disintegrate meaning that it's decay, become B. Okay? Now the half-life of A is equal to 5 days. If the initial value of the nucleic A is 1 exponent, 20, calculate the number of nucleic formed after 20 days. Okay? So meaning that when A decay, it will change, become B. So we need to find how many A already decayed. Okay, so we can use the equations where, okay, so we can use the equations number two where n is equal to n naught exponential negative lambda t. Okay, and remember n here is the remaining nucleic that have not decayed. Okay, so n is the remaining, okay, the remaining initial is one exponent 20. Exponent negative lambda. Okay, where we know that half life is equal to ln 2 over lambda. So we can substitute in lambda is equal to ln 2 over half life. Okay, so we can substitute in ln 2 over half life where the half life is 5 days. Okay, so it's equal to 5 days and t is after 20 days. Okay, so meaning that after 20 days, how many nucleic A that still remain? Okay, so this and this actually we can cancel so after pressing the calculator the value that we will get is actually equals to 6.25 exponent 18 nucleic okay so this is the remaining nucleic that have not decayed okay so when you want to find the value or the number of nucleic for b meaning that we need to find a that already decay okay so a that already decay only will become b Okay, but 6.25 exponent 18 is the remaining. Okay, meaning that we need to minus or we need to find out n that already decayed. So we will take the initial value 1 exponent 20 minus the minus 6.25 exponent 18. This is the remaining. To find out the number of nucleic A that already decay and become B. So the value or the nucleic that already become B is equal to 9.375 exponent 19 nucleic we'll go to example 5 80 percent of radioactive substance decay in four days determine the decay constant okay so meaning that initially initially there is a number of substance where we write as n naught okay after t equals to four days 80% of the radioactive substance already decayed. Okay, so meaning that we already lost 80%. So the remaining is only left 20% of the initial nucleic. So we can use the second equations where n equals to n naught exponential negative lambda t. Where n, and please bear in mind that n, as I mentioned just now, is the remaining. Okay, so when you substitute inside, the equations you must be careful you cannot substitute 80 percent because the percent is the radioactive substance that already decayed okay so we must substitute the remaining which is 0 0.2 and not equals to n not exponential negative lambda where t equals to four days okay so since the unit is in four days later the answer that we substitute okay later the answer will be in per days okay so n not and n not we can cancel off Okay, so the final answer that we will get for the decay constant lambda is equal to 0 0.402 per days. Okay, next we will continue with B. Okay, B is to determine the half-life of the substance. 
So we will use the third equations where half life is equal to ln 2 over lambda, where lambda is equal to 0 0.420 days, okay, per days. Okay, so the answer for the half life of the substain is equal to 1.72 and the unit is in days. Okay, next we go to example 6. A phosphorus 32 is a beta emitter with decay constant 5.6 exponent negative 7 per second. So meaning that initially we already know that the decay constant lambda is 5.6 exponent negative 7 per second. For a particle, for a particular application, the phosphorus 32 emits 4 exponent 7 beta particle every second. Okay, so this is actually give us the decay rate or the activity. Okay, activity or the decay rate is equal to 4 exponent 7 decay decay per second. So now, determine the half-life of the phosphorus. So since we have the activity and we have the lambda, okay, if you want to use if you want to determine the value for half-life, you can use the third equations where half-life is equal to ln 2 over the decay constant, where the decay constant is equal to 5.6 exponent negative 7 per second. Therefore, the half-life of the phosphorus is equal to 1.24 exponent 6 and the unit is in second. Okay, since the sum we substitute is per second. Next, B, determine the mass of the pure phosphorus 32 well given the decay rate so activity or the decay rate is equal to negative decay constant times n where the decay rate is equal to negative 4 exponent 7 and is equal to negative lambda 5.6 exponent negative 7 n okay and remember the number of nucleate okay must in positive therefore so when you substitute the decay rate, you must substitute negative because we need to cancel off the negative. Negative meaning that it's reducing. Okay, so the final answer, the nucleate for the phosphorus is equal to 7.14 exponent 13 nucleate at that particular decay rate. Okay, but the question asks us to find the mass. So we need to use number of nucleate per number of Avogadro equals to mass per molar mass. Okay, so we can find the mass M, okay, because they give us, because we notice that phosphorus, the molar mass for the phosphorus is 32 gram. Okay, so we substitute in number of nuclei 7.14 exponent 13 over number of regado 6.02 exponent 23 equals to mass per molar mass, where the molar mass for phosphorus is 32 gram. So I substitute in 32 gram. Okay, so gram, if I want to change it become kg, okay, I need to write it in exponent negative 3 kg. Okay, therefore, m or the mass of the pure phosphorus is equal to 3.8 exponent negative 12 kg. Okay. Okay, next, we will continue with example number 7. This is the last question for this subtopic. A thorium-228 isotope, which has the half-life of 1.913 years, decay by emitting alpha particle into radium-224 nucleus. Okay, so meaning that initially it's 228, and then when it decay, it will emit alpha particle, where alpha particle is equal to 42 helium, okay, and it will become radium-224. So number one, Calculate the decay constant where the decay constant lambda is equal to ln 2 over half life. So we substitute in the value ln 2 over half life where t half life is 1.913 years. So I will convert years into second, okay, by multiply with 1 year 365 days, 1 day is 24 hours, 1 hour is 60 minute, 1 minute is 60 second. Okay, so the answer later, it will become per second. Okay, so the decay constant is equal to 1.15 1.15 exponent negative 8 per second. Okay, B, 
find the mass of the thorium 228 required to decay with the activity of 12, of 12 curie. Okay, so, so based on the activity here, A or the decay rate, the N over the D is equal to negative lambda N. So we need to find what is the number of nuclei at that moment. Okay, so N, therefore the activity is equal to 12 curie, where 1 curie is equal to 3.7 exponent 10. And lambda is the decay constant, where the decay constant is equal to 1.15 exponent negative 8 times n okay so since here we have negative so in front the activity on the decay rate also we need to substitute the negative meaning that it is reducing okay so later it will cancel off and please bear in mind that the number of nuclei will always positive so the final answer for the number of nuclei is equal to 3.86 exponent 19 nuclei okay meaning that at that moment the number of nuclei is 3.86 exponent 19 nuclei so now we want to find the mass. So since, since this is the uh, nucleate that we have, so we can use the formula N over number Avogadro equals to mass over molar mass to determine the mass of the thorium at that moment. So I substitute in the value 3.86 exponent 19 over number Avogadro 6.02 exponent 23 equals to mass per molar mass where for thorium is equal to 228 gram so it's 228 gram okay or you want to convert into kg also can so the final answer n is equal to 1.46 exponent negative 2 gram or we can convert it into kg 1.46 exponent negative 5 kg okay c Find the number of alpha particles per second for decay 50 gram of thorium 228. Okay, so we need to determine first how many nuclei for 15 gram. So we can use the formula where n over number of regado equals to mass per molar mass, where n is the unknown and number of regado is equal to 6.02 exponent 23 equals to mass at that moment is 15 gram. And the molar mass for thorium is 228 gram. Therefore, the number of nuclei at that moment is 3.96 exponent 22 nuclei. So now we want to find the number of alpha particles per second, meaning that we want to find the activity or the decay rate. Okay, so it's equal to negative lambda n. So we substitute in the value where the decay constant is 1.15 exponent negative 8 and the number of nuclei at that moment is 3.96 exponent 22. Therefore, the number of alpha particles per second or the activity is equal to 4.55 exponent 14 k per second. Meaning that 15 gram of thorium it decay and it will change become radium by emitting an alpha particle. Okay, so this is the number of thorium that decay and already convert into alpha particle. So that's all for this video. Thank you for watching. Bye.